Hello again. Uh, today I thought I would do a tutorial on how to do avatar appearance override, which is changing the way characters look in your game, more specifically the characters you play as. The easiest way to do this is to use the built-in uh, rig builder plugin, and we're going to start by clicking build rig. And you can do this with R15 or R6, but I, I, like, uh, I like using R6 because it's simpler. And I'm going to create a mesh rig and it should insert a dummy that looks like this into the game. And before you can get it to work, there's a couple things you're gonna need to do uh, to kind of tweak it and make it uh, more functional. So we're gonna start by collapsing it in the Explorer pane and looking at all of its children. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the humanoid root part and we're gonna set its transparency to one so that you can't see it at all. And then we're going to unanchor it because uh, these rigs by default have the humanoid root part anchored and that will make it so that the character won't work So we're going to go ahead and set that to false next you're going to uh, You're going to want to You're going to change the name of the model to starter character with a capital S and a capital C And there are a couple different properties in the humanoid you can adjust uh, the display distance type. Uh, typically you want to leave that alone, but there are some cases where you might want to change it and you can set it to have more health or jump power. So let's say we wanted to make a character that walks faster. You could set the walk speed to 32 and, uh, that's one of many ways you could make it so that players walk faster when they spawn in the game. Um, and then from here, you're going to drag it into the starter player. So it should be nested inside of there. And when you hit play, you will spawn as that gray character and you'll walk faster too. You don't have to do the walk speed thing. I just thought that would be a cool demo to do. And from here, it's really just a matter of uh, making it look the way you want it to look. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, you can first start off by changing the colors of it. You can use a, the object, the body colors object, or you can just change the color of the parts themselves. So I could kind of go for the classic noob appearance here. So I think that's what I'm going to do because I think that would be funny. Kind of a throwback to old Roblox. Good old days. You could do something. Well, that's actually not accurate. It looked different, different green. Eh, it's not really, I'm not seeing it here. I think that was pretty close. And if you wanted to, you could delete the character meshes and make it just a block. And you can also go to the toolbox and you could look through some free models. Although I advise you be careful with this because sometimes people put weird scripts and other things inside of hats and clothing. So just be cautious about that. So uh, look up skeleton, for example, and if you wanted to like find the skeleton head, you could slap this into the game and go to the Explorer pane, collapse it, go into the handle, and uh, it looks like this person already made it. So this is just a normal accessory, but you have to watch out because sometimes people will put things, scripts or other objects that will mess with your game and you don't want that. And um, also make sure that it's not anchored because if the handle part is anchored, it won't snap on properly to the character. So in this case, it was already not anchored, but uh, yeah. And then anytime you want that character, just drag it into the starter player and you'll spawn as that character. Um, I might make a future tutorial where you can get into like how you would make each team spawn with a specific like color uniform or something. But uh, that's kind of for more down the road. I thought I'd just do an intro on this right now. And one more thing I want to show uh, is a more reliable way to get uh, avatar assets. So you would go over to view. And if you don't already have the command bar open, click it. And you're going to use the insert service to insert hats, uh, clothing, gear, whatever it is, whatever your heart desires. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So you're going to type game get service. insert service, load asset, and then you're going to head over to the catalog 
and uh, pick out a hat, a face, or a gear, pretty much anything you desire. Uh, packages, I don't believe work with this. You can try, but uh, you might be able to play around with it enough uh, to get it to work. But we're going to start with a hat, and you're going to go to the address bar and copy its asset ID. And then we're going to head back to Studio, and you're going to paste that ID between the parentheses after load asset. And then you're going to type colon get children. And then after the closed parentheses, you're going to put square brackets with a one in between them and then space. And you're going to type dot parent equals game dot workspace. And then it will insert a Roebling. There's two of them because I actually just tested this before I recorded it, but it would only insert one uh, if I hadn't already done that. And, uh, yeah, that, uh, then you can just go ahead and drag it. So I'm going to get rid of that stupid skeleton head. So this will be a little more visible Then snap inside and you got yourself some bling. And if you wanted to do like a face, you could delete the face inside of the character's head and then go over to back to the catalog. And, uh, what's a cool face? None of these are cool faces. Oh, this is a classic. Okay. Uh, you can copy the asset ID of the shiny teeth face, head back, and then essentially just replace that ID uh, with whatever you want to insert. And your command bar will automatically save it in the history. So if you type the up arrow when you have the command bar focused, it'll go back and you can kind of go through all the IDs you've already done. It's useful when you're making a game with like a lot of different hats and stuff, and it's easy to lose track. And sometimes you delete things, and if you wanted to go back and change it or get it back, it's really uh, helpful having that or not having to type that command every time. So with faces, you just drag them inside the head because faces are just decals inside of a head. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's how you do character appearance override. As far as R15 goes, it's a little trickier because uh, of all the different moving mesh parts. But in general, it's it's the same idea. The only difference is that character meshes, which are um the objects i deleted earlier that change the appearance of the limbs they those don't work with r15 but other than that if you're making an r6 character that uh has them you can use those and uh yeah if you enjoyed the tutorial give it a like uh, appreciate it and uh, i will see you next time